Lecture number 3. Interface of the Editor Adobe Photoshop. There is our plan of the lesson. Number 1 is raster graphics. Number 2 is editors for working with raster graphics. Number 3 is raster graphics editor Adobe Photoshop. And the number 4 is Adobe Photoshop raster editor tools, panels, palettes. And there is uh, some references for you, you can look and read them if you want to know more information about our lesson. Adobe Photoshop is a program that can do many interesting things, but most often it is not used to its true value. Users employ this professional program for some trivial things that can be done with the Windows Paint CPC. This video tutorial will introduce basic tools to work with Adobe Photoshop CS3, Creative Studio 3. Then we will have a brief demonstration of how we can remove blemishes, the image, or how we can modify some shots that we like the show. Of course, most of the tools and settings you can meet and Adobe Photoshop CS4 plays but with minor differences. Also, in this video tutorial, Alex will show us tricks such as how we can remove the red eye effect in photos and how we can change easily images, pictures and etc. During tutorial Alex will present and how they use they are used most of the tools also using Adobe Photoshop CS3. Adobe Photoshop is a raster graphics editor developed and published by Adobe Systems for Macos and Windows. Photoshop is considered one of the little in photo editing software. And the software allows users to manipulate, crop, resize and correct color on digital photos. The software is particularly popular amongst professional photographers and the graphic designers. Starting from version Abdil version 6, it has become more versatile and is now a staple for print designers, web designers, video professionals and more. CS3 Creative Suit 3 is a suit big enough with so to structure and explain it to be and the less skilled in IT to understand and use something from the grid software package. Today's episode will handle most appreciated and used the suit components, namely Photoshop. This program shows him Alex in tutorial, namely Adobe Photoshop. CS3 is part of a suit larger is called Adobe Master Collection CS3 or CS4 that contains several software which we will present in other tutorials come in video tutorial at all by using these programs can do many interesting things in design, web design and uh, even animation not for nothing is used for all professionals in graphic and web design best to watch this video tutorial about adobe photoshop cs3 presented to us by our friend chiriku alex who is very skilled in this area Adobe Photoshop CS6 is a popular image editing software that provides a work environment consistent with Adobe Illustrator 
Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop and other products in the Adobe Creative Suite. This tutorial is an introduction to using Adobe Photoshop. Here you will learn how to get started, how to use the interface and how to modify images with basic editing skills. A brief history of Photoshop. Photoshop was de developed in 1987 by the American brothers Thomas and John Knoll, who sold the distribution license to Adobe Systems Incorporated in 1988. A brief history of Photoshop. Thomas Knoll, a PhD student at the University of Michigan, began writing a program on his Macintosh Plus to display grayscale images on a monochrome display. This program called Display caught the attention of his brother John Knoll, an industrial light and magic employee who recommended that Thomas turn it into a full-fledged image editing program. Thomas took a six-month break from his studies in 1988 to collaborate with the brother on the program. Later that year, Thomas renamed his program Photoshop. During this time, John traveled to Silicon Valley and had a demonstration of the program to engineers at Apple and Russell Brown, art director at Adobe. Both showing were successful and Adobe decided to purchase this license to Drusty Brood in September 1988. Version history, you can look at the picture, you can see that there are um, a lot of versions of the Adobe Photoshop. Editing photos. Editing photos is Photoshop's original use. It is uh, in the name after all. Even after a quarter of a century of competition, Photoshop is the most powerful image editor out there. You can modify any pixel in an image pretty much any way you'd like. Digital painting. Most paintings, cartoons, book covers and other art that you see online isn't created with a paintbrush, paints and canvas. It might not look like it, but most of them are now painted using a computer. Photoshop is one of the most popular apps for doing that. Digital painting uses technology to emulate old school brush in hand, buried on head painting. With a Wacom graphics tablet, you can draw or paint without having to use a mouse or good forbid a touchpad graphic design also adobe also uh, has graphic design specific apps like indesign and illustrator in the creative cloud Many of their tools have been incorporated into Photoshop as well. For example, the pen tool is a sample in almost all Adobe's apps. While Photoshop isn't the best graphic design app of there, it is entirely competent. Something more special that will make your life easier but there is very little you can do if you are going to go let design work investing time in learning one of the other apps is worth it but if you just occasionally want to create a christmas card design your t-shirt mock up and quite a large for your business or even created a business card 
Photoshop is perfect. Applications of Photoshop Web Design One of the most important steps in web design is creating a mock-up. A finished design made in an app like Photoshop is something that amateurs often skip. I know that when I first started designing websites, I jumped straight into coding rather than taking the time to plan out that I wanted the site to really look like. All I had was a little vision in my head. Applications of Photoshop Editing video the best thing about editing videos in Photoshop is that you can get to use adjustment lawyers that just as if you were editing a photo. If you want to convert a regular video you shoot on your iPhone into a high contrast black and white. Film from Neuer style clip, you can do it with just three layers. If you know how to edit photos but don't know how to use apps like Premiere Pro and After Effects, Photoshop can be a great alternative. All the tools you're familiar with are there. Another awesome feature of Using Photoshop to edit videos is you can also create GIFs. Future of Photoshop Project Looper lets you search for images with images. Use any image as your starting point and Looper will search behind for visually similar images. Diffusing photo bombs is a tool that is designed to detect distractions in a photograph and help you remove them using just one slider. When you add a photo to the tool, it's analyze it to find the water it drinks are the biggest distractions and color codes those by how distracting they are the more distracting, the brighter white will they'll appear. Then you can simply use the slide to remove the most distracting part. Adobe is also bringing a special application known as Adobe HD, just for the UI and UX designers. Adobe Photoshop is a raster graphics editor developed and published by Adobe Systems for Macos and Windows. Photoshop is considered one of the leaders in photo editing software. The software allows users to manipulate, crop, resize and correct color on digital photos. The software is particularly popular amongst professional photographers and graphic designers. Starting from version of deal version 6, it has become more versatile and is now a sample for print designers, web designers, video professionals and more. You can see the list of file formats and file name extensions is our PSD, JPEG, GIF, PNG, TIFF, and a PDF. Description PSD Adobe Photoshop uses Photoshop documents or PSD file format by default. GPEG The Joint Photograph Experts Group JPEG, GPG, and GPE. File name extensions is used for digital photography. And GIF, GIF. The graphics interchange format or GIF includes GIF file name extension is popularly used for creating web page elements, blocks, and etc. P 
PNG, the Portable Network Graphics or PNG, format was designed as an alternative to JFE and JPEG formats. TIF, the Target Image File Format or TIFF, TIFF or TIFF, saves and preserves all of the original image data. PDF, the Portable Document Format. PDF file format is used to encapsulate the text, fonts, graphic, and other information needed to display it. Starting with Photoshop, click the Start menu and go to the Programs folder. You will see an adult folder with Photoshop inside. Click this icon. And you can see at the picture the description of this text. Photoshop is unlike other common software interfaces which emulate virtual typewriters or graphing paper. Photoshop creates an artist virtual studio dark room. When you open the program, you see a toolbox on the left with tools you will use to manipulate your images. And on the right, a white square which is your canvas or work area. The gray area surrounding the canvas is not part of your image, but only defines its edge. To change the canvas dimensions, go to image and then canvas size. You can type in any dimensions you like, but remember that the area of the image is directly proportional to the file size. To create a new document, click file and the new. This will Open the document setup dialog box. You can see it. This is if the image you have is saved on a disk or to the computer, select file, then open and then nav navigate to the disk drive or file where your image is saved. Choose the image file and click open. At this point, you may want to save your image under a different name so that you can always have the original to fall back on the size of a mistake. To save your file, select File and then Save As and type in the new name of the file in the dialog box. Um, the GUI is Photoshop interface, image name, main menu, palette, color, layers, history, image, and the toolbar. Photoshop interface. The menu bar consists of nine menus. File, edit, image, lawyer, select, filter, view, window, and help. Adobe Photoshop is a powerful tool for editing programs and graphics. The first step in learning Photoshop is to familiarize yourself with the Photoshop interface, which consists of five basic components, and they are first menu bar menu bar contains all of Photoshop's available options. Number two is Toolbox has various tools of for editing the image. Number three is Options Bar, search the options for the currently selected tool. And the number four is Palettes, various panes to control different aspects of the project, includes layers, channels, paths, history, and etc. And the finally fifth is image area, the currently open image or images. The toolbox is 
The toolbox contains many of the tools you will be working with in Photoshop. This contains tools for working with images in Photoshop. You can look at there. The toolbox has various tools for editing an image. The toolbox is divided into several sections for familiar tools. Selection tools, enchantment tools, vector tools, navigation tools, color tools, and the toolbox is pictured to the left. It contains all of the various Photoshop tools. In addition to the visual tools, the tools with a small black arrow in the lower high corner contain fly out menus with other related tool choices. In the example to the left, the dodge tool is depressed, displaying the burn tool and the sponge tool in the fly out menu. To select a tool to use, if the tool is visible on the toolbox, clean it once and activate it. Or error, if the tool is hidden, point to the appreciate tool family icon and hold the mouse button down. The fly down fly out menu will appear and click on the desired tool in the menu to activate it. And after it the toolbar. The toolbar, also known as the toolbox or the tools panel, is where Photoshop holds all of its tools. You'll find it along the left of Photoshop interface. There's tool for making selections for editing and retouching images for painting, adding type or shapes to your document and more. Expanding the toolbar. By default, the toolbar appears as a long single column of tools. Clicking the double arrows at the top will expand the toolbar into a shorter double column. Click the arrows again to return the, to the single column layout. The document tab. At the top of the document window is a document tab. The tab displays the name and file type of the document, Adobe Stock, and the numbers JPEG, and its current zoom level 25%. The tab is also how we switch between document windows when we have more than one image open in Photoshop. We'll learn more about working with multiply documents in another lesson. In the next, the zoom level and status bar. In the bottom left of the document window we find more information about the image the current zoom level is displayed just like it is in the documents tab and to the right of the zoom level is the status bar by default the status bar displays the color profile of the image in my case it's adobe rgb 1998 Yours may say something different like this text. And we learned about color profiles in the Essential Photoshop Color Settings tutorial back in Chapter 1. The next is the menu bar. Along the very top of Photoshop interface is the menu bar. The menu bar is where we find various options and comments all grouped into categories. The file menu, for example, holds options for opening, saving, and closing documents. The lawyer menu lists options for working with layers. Photoshop's menu filter are found under the filter menu, and so on. We won't go through every category and menu item here, but we'll run 
all about them in the future lessons as they become important. Note that the Photoshop CC category on the left of the menu bar is in the screenshot is only found in the Mac version of Photoshop. And the next is the panels. Along the right of Photoshop's interface is the way we find the panels. Panels give us access to all sorts of comments and options. And there are different panels for different tasks. The most important panel is the layers panel. And where we add the layers and work with the layers in our document. But there are lots of other panels as well, all of which we'll be look looking at later. And after it, the search bar. New in Photoshop CC is the search bar. The search bar lets us quickly find tools of comments in Photoshop as well as tutorials in different topics or images for Adobe Stock. To use the search further, click on the search icon, the magnifying glass in the upper right of Photoshop. You'll find it just above the panel column. If you're using Photoshop CC but you're not seeing the search icon, make sure your copy of Photoshop is up to date. Workspaces. Finally, let's look at workspaces. A workspace in Photoshop is a presence collection and arrangement of the various interface elements. Workspaces can control which of Photoshop's panels are displayed on the screen, along with how those panels are arranged. A workspace can change the load of the tools in the toolbar. Items in the menu bar along with keyboards, shortcuts can also be customized as part of a workspace. By default, Photoshop uses a workspace known as Essentials. The Essentials workspace is a general all-purpose workspace with an interface layout that's suitable for many different types of tasks but there are other workspaces to choose from as well. We can switch between workspaces using the workspace option in the upper right of Photoshop. In Photoshop CC, the workspace option is represented by an icon. In Photoshop CS6, it's a selection box with the name of the currently selected workspace displayed in the box. You can look at this picture and know some more information. And there are some questions for you. Number one is raster graphics. Number two, editors for working with raster graphics. Number three is Raster Graphics Editor Adobe Photoshop. Number four is Adobe Photoshop Raster Editor. And uh, Tools, Panels, Palettes. Thank you for attention. Nazarlanuzha Rahmiet.